Hi everyone, I think we are ready to get started. So um, welcome to this panel, A Day in the Life of a Hello. Researcher. Uh, my name is Ellen Lashira, yeah, I'm at the Institute for Government and I'll be um, <laughs> okay. chairing the session today. Um, um, well, do, the point of this I panel is just to kind of demystify a little bit about what the um, actual kind of tasks of a think tank researcher look like because it can be a bit of a mysterious title for, for, for most of the sort of junior and mid-level people working at think tanks. Uh, so I'm really glad to be joined by three people today that will help shed a bit of light on what, what, what you actually do when you are a researcher in a think tank. Uh, so with me, also from the Institute for Government, is uh, Alex Nice. Uh, we've also got Ross Moody from the Centre for Progressive Policy and uh, Lala Fatrai from the uh, from Resolution Foundation. Uh, We'll do a few minutes kind of with each speaker just talking a little bit about what their days usually look like. And then we'll be, have lots of time at the end for plenty of questions. So please do ask away. Uh, one thing to say just before we begin is there are two ways for you to ask questions and you can kind of ask them however you prefer. Either just put them directly in the chat and I'll be keeping an eye on that. Uh, or if you prefer and you would like to say your question kind of on screen you can use the raise hand function and then we'll uh, when I call on you um you can unmute yourself or I can unmute you to to ask your question directly to the panelists so yeah feel free to keep those questions uh coming especially when we get to that point but for now I'll hand straight over to Alex to start things off thanks very much Eleanor um it's really a pleasure to speak at this event um so my name is Alex Nice, and uh, like Eleanor, I'm a researcher at the Institute for Government, which is a think tank which tries to make government more effective, works with the civil service, um, and, and uh, with uh, officials that uh, work on public policy. Uh, and I work specifically in a team um, devoted to devolution. So essentially, we work on two issues. One is how the UK government uh, works and interacts with the Scottish, Welsh, and Northern Ireland governments. Uh, and how that can be made to work better, because in, in many contexts, uh, they find it very difficult to cooperate and work with each other. And the second um, big issue I work on, particularly at the moment, is looking at local and regional government in England. And we look at questions of whether there's the right distribution of powers between central government and local government, whether the funding arrangements work well, and whether new power should be given to local and regional governments for things like transport, economic development, and net zero. So I guess when I was thinking about a typical day, I thought it was helpful to think a little bit about what a think tank is for. And um, I think if you imagine a triangle made up of academia and research in one corner, government and policy making in another, and Westminster, and then the public and the media in the third, then I would say that think tanks sit in the middle of that triangle. And what we're trying to do essentially is to improve the way that policy is made, policies are put together and implemented by interacting with all three of those, with government, with academia, and with the media and the public. So I guess what I would say is that in practice, what that means is that your day can be very varied and you might find that you're doing quite a range of activities during it. If you're a researcher in a think tank, then you'll usually have one or more core research projects. So at the moment I'm looking, as I said, uh, particularly at um, English devolution, so uh, mayors and city regions outside London in places like Manchester and the West Midlands, and we're trying to assess how effective they are and what additional powers they could be given so they achieve their objectives. Um, so one part of what I do is sort of the kind of core research on that question that involves the desk research, reading background literature, collecting and analysing data, uh, and in many cases at the Institute for Government, we also do a lot of interviews and we talk to a lot of policymakers to get their opinions, to understand their concerns because, and, and to uh, feed in the information from them into, into the public domain. Um, so uh, that's sort of one cluster of things you've done. But then once you've done your research, uh, you'll then spend quite a lot of time writing it up into a report in a format that will convince other people it should be accessible. Uh, and, and, and easy to understand, and I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, but at the same time, another part of your job, which you may often be doing at the same time, is about making sure that your research has influence on policy and on policymakers and the public. You want to promote your ideas to, to all of them. So what does that look like in practice? Well, 
you, on any given day, you might be giving media interviews about your work or about how your work in, uh, relates to a topical issue that's come up in the news, or you might write a short comment piece for a newspaper or for the website, um, uh, in, again, in response to some uh, news issue. Uh, and also you'll try to influence policymakers directly. So you might hold events at which they'll attend, or you might give them briefings to officials and civil servants, or you might give evidence to um, MPs in Parliament uh, if they're looking at an issue which relates to research that you've done. So um, I guess what I would say about a typical uh, day for a think tank, or someone working in a think tank, is that it's really multifaceted and you need a wide range of skills it's not just about having a deep knowledge of a particular policy issue. In fact, I would say that's quite secondary, particularly when you start at the think tank. It's more about working with people and being able to both do research and also work with people and engage with people and convince people why what you do is really important and why they need to, they should implement the recommendations that you, that you have. Uh, and I think above all, the, the second thing is that you need to be able to express complicated ideas in a way that's convincing to other people and uh, easy for them to understand so that again you can convince people why this problem is important and why what you say about what should change uh, should be listened to so that's that's uh, what I would say a typical day is like thanks very much Alex um Ross can I come to you next yeah sure um can you hear me all right off mute cool um so hold on one second I just need to close down this thing on zoom uh, cool. Um, so my name is Ross. Uh, thanks for having me uh, here today. Um, I'm from the Centre for Progressive Policy and I'm a research analyst. So um, CPP is all about inclusive growth. That's our main thing. So the idea that if the economy is to grow, then really it should do so in such a way that more people are able to benefit and contribute from that growth. Um, naturally, that's very broad. So we cover all things. Um, Levelling up and regional inequality is probably our main thing. But net zero in the just transition improving outcomes in education, healthcare, whatever it may be. So um, it's quite broad work. Um, also as well, we host the Inclusive Growth Network, which is a network of 12 different councils based across the country where we do a lot of um, direct work with local leaders trying to help them deliver inclusive growth uh, on the ground. But I'm in the research team. Um, CPP is quite small. So I know that we have um, IFG and the Resolution Foundation here, but CPP is a lot smaller, which means that I get to dabble in quite a lot. So rather than Alex, who was saying that he works on one specific issue, which is devolution. Um, we, you know, in our, in our team, we sort of, we're so small that we tend to cover all of the topics together. Um, and we have a core research program, which changes time to time. It can be on some of the issues that I've mentioned, but it can be, um, can be on other things as well. Um, but we, you know, we're, we're kind of more generalists. Um, I think that everyone in the team sort of has their areas of policy interest and expertise, but because we're so small, because our policy area is so big we really have to be quite versatile in what we do and that means that one day you could be working and you could be crunching numbers on net zero and the other day you could be um interviewing mayors about the work that they're doing in their places or whatever it may be um but the research itself can be quite varied um in the time that i spend doing research it's probably mainly data analysis but a big chunk of that is actually interpret interpreting the data so thinking about the numbers and the story that is telling um the narrative that you could pull out of that and what insight that offers, which is new and relevant to both our mission at CPP, but then the wider political debate as well, and trying to put in, you know, look for opportunities where you can influence policy. Um, but it can be, you know, it can be other things. It can be also be drafting survey questions for a qualitative study, for example, or doing literature reviews or sense checking uh, a piece of work that a colleague's done or writing a written piece for um, a short, short comment piece or a longer written piece for publication. Um, Research, research isn't just one side of it, so in everything you do, you're in constant engagement with external people. Um, that could be politicians, that could be civil servants, that could be council staff, that could be people working in NGOs or charities, that could be people working on the front line or journalists. It could be, it's a massive, massive bunch of people that you're in constant engagement with where you're trying to identify, work with people to identify what the big issues are and where it is that we can have a positive influence. Um, so for example, just something which is, you know, testament to that engagement, um, I've been working to put together an advisory board for a new project that we're working on, which is all about exploring the role of place in the educational outcomes of deprived children. Um, just for reference, uh, an advisory group is, is essentially a group which sort of supports us in forging our research programme, uh, the questions that we want to answer and giving us constant feedback as we do it. You know, In that process, I've been 
sort of a lot of looking online, trying to identify the people who are the big names and the experts on the topics that we're looking at, um, speaking to people both internally and externally and trying to pull that group together. So, you know, even though research is obviously a big part of it, there's so many other parts of the job as well that we have to do. Um, one thing that you'll have to do is a lot of writing, and Alex touched on that, but you'll write things like blogs, um, you'll write pieces for external places, like common pieces for websites and for newspapers. Um, increasingly, people are writing tweets um, and threads on Twitter. Uh, they seem to be quite important these days in a way that people can contribute to the debate. Um, but also as well, um, as was mentioned, you quite often you'll be talking to the radio, you'll be talking to, you might be talking on television. I'm not quite there yet, but, you know, hopefully in the future um, or giving comments to journalists all about the research that you're doing. What is the perspective of the think tank? You know, there's people who sort of work on policy issues day in, day out, and you know where where we think um, where we think things could be going, and where um, there's a role for policy to have a positive impact on people's lives. Uh, you know, think tanks are full of ideas and they're very engaged, so it's key that their voices are heard. But, um, yeah, it's very varied work, but I think one thing's for certain that if you're interested in policy and are passionate about any sort of social or political issues, then you'll find a job rewarding. Um, it's quite fun. Above all, I think that's an important thing, which is quite understated. You know, I think probably speak for most of the sex when I say that as well. You'll work with some incredibly bright and very talented and passionate people who care about solving big issues um, as they're unfolding. You know, so I think anyone who's interested in current affairs and tries to have a positive impact on things, then it's something that you'll enjoy. So, you know, if you're naturally curious about things, um, the world around you and, you know, actually care about solving problems and, uh, you know, coming up with creative solutions to do that, then it's something that, you know, as a career path, you should definitely consider. But yeah, I think that's, that's probably the summary of everything. Great. Thanks so much, Ross. Uh, finally, Lalitha. Hi. Um, thanks, Eleanor. Thanks, everyone, for your really interesting talks as well. So I'm Lalitha Chai. I'm a researcher at the Resolution Foundation. So a bit about me. Um, I've worked here for nearly a year before that I worked at another think tank too. So um, the Resolution Foundation, um, we're a think tank. So our main thing is working on improving living standards for people on low to middle incomes. And the way we do this is um, by doing like economic research. So like analysis, trying to work out what is driving what, how to solve these like complex issues and coming up with policy as well so some of the areas we work on are living standards incomes and um, the labor market intergenerational inequality welfare net zero trade and like macroeconomic policy as well um so i'll talk to you a bit as well about some of the things that like researchers in our team would do so at rf there's about 30, I think about 30 people work here, but the big bulk of that is the research team. I think there's like 18 people in the research team. So there's quite a lot of us and um, we tend to specialise in like one or two research areas. So for me, I specialise in living standards and welfare research. So I guess the main thing that we do with our time is we specialise in quantitative research as opposed to qualitative we do a bit of qualitative but not as much so I spend a lot of my time analyzing data so that can look like um sort of analyzing micro data so like surveys um analyzing like data released by the ONS or like other um government departments as well um we make lots of charts we're quite proud of our charts which sounds very nerdy but I think they're like a really good way to sort of help visualize things and help explain things and like get a point across well and answer a research question. So if you wanted to know, for example, what are the determinants of household income? So what are the things that are going to affect them? That's a research question. And you can sort of like analyze some data and see what affects what and how much what's the most important and what's the least important at the moment and stuff like that um like the others have said we spend a lot of time writing reports as well so I guess you sort of start off with a framework of you have a research question you sort of do some analysis to go and answer that and then you'll write a report almost around that so it's explaining your research 
what's going on, why it matters, why it's relevant, how things link together, um, how what's happened in the past could be affecting what's going to happen in the future. So um, I guess like we write reports on key issues, so things happening at the moment. So I'm doing something at the moment on the cost of living crisis, which will come out in about a couple of weeks and how um, household income is going to be affected. And I guess we will also look a bit more in the medium term as well at the moment. So we're looking, we're doing this thing called the Economy 2030 Inquiry, where we're doing like a load of research on all the things affecting the economy in the next decade over the 2020s. Um, we also come up with policy based on analysis. So say you've got your report, you know what the issues are, you know where the problems are, you then go and think, okay, but how are we going to solve these problems? And you can sort of come up with a policy and model that impact and come up with something where it's going to be the most effective. Um, another thing we do is, I guess, a lot of our work can be quite reactive. So, for example, if the government come up with a new policy or some new data is released, we'll do like a quick response to that. Um, we also do like media and speaking engagement. So I've done like TV, radio, like live TV, pre-recorded TV. Um, I guess like speaking engagements, like coming here and talking to you guys, um, talking at other events as well about our research. And another thing we do is like meeting with stakeholders. So we might meet with like people in government and explain our research to them or other groups who are sort of working on similar things. So everyone in the research team does like a bit of a bit of all of those things. Um, so I guess for me, like my favorite things about being a researcher is I get to work on issues that I care about and I think are really important and help people on low incomes. Like I think pretty much everyone sort of goes into these kind of roles with like an aim of wanting to make the world a better place in some sort of way. And I guess we're very lucky in the fact that we sort of get to do that. Like, I guess maybe not as directly as say literally saving someone's life as a doctor or whatever, but that, you know, ideally you're working towards, I guess, like improving policy. Um, again, being able to work somewhere where you can influence economic policy in public debates like the Resolution Foundation um, pops up quite a lot sort of in the media and I think like what we say people listen to which is definitely a good place to be in. Um, I also love like the people I work with it's a lot of I think when you work in these sort of like smaller or like small to mid-sized organizations and you're all sort of working the same things You've all, you're similar people and you've got similar interests, which means you can make some really good friends out of it. Um, I guess another thing I really like is every day is different. And there are some days where you're just like going to work and the day can be completely different, like how you thought it was going to be. So I rocked up to work last week and then I just ended up going to a meeting with the Office for Budget Responsibility in the afternoon. And then there's been times where I've just kind of got to work and then um, the director of communications at work will say to me do you want to go on BBC News in a couple of hours and just like yeah weird exciting things like that happen so if you're interested in like economics social policy politics all of that making a difference in some sort of way it's just like the perfect perfect job for you thanks Brilliant, thank you. Um, we have ha had lots of great questions coming in already, so do keep them coming. Um, apologies in advance if we don't get to yours. Um, I know that we've only got 10 minutes left, so we may not have time to answer all of them. I would like to start with, um, I might get each of you to just give a kind of short reflection on this one. Um, Rob has asked, what do you think the key attributes are for a researcher working in a think tank? So if I can go in reverse order, so start with Lalitha, what do you think are the key attributes for a researcher? Um, I guess one thing I would say is it's maybe not 
so much about like experience or qualifications I think these things do matter to some extent but I think if you're someone who's quite keen and quite interested in things and interested in the way the world works and you're the kind of person where you can pick up things quickly and be willing to like work hard learn a load of new things I think that sort of thing is really important just be having like an interest in the world and sort of wanting to like develop yourself is like really good great uh Ross any anything to add do you agree yeah definitely agree I think there's probably two well there's the fundamentals so you know knowing how to do like data analysis knowing you know the fundamentals of research and how to do that and how to communicate that that's probably it but I remember our manager said to me once, he was like, that will get you a that will get you your first job, but the thing that will get you promotions is creativity. So you have to be quite a creative person. You know, if you're looking at any sort of issue, any policy area, then you have to be able to look at it and think, okay, what well, what is it that I think that is different? How do I come up with something which contributes something which is a different perspective to this debate? So that requires a sort of a creative way of thinking. So, you know, curiosity as well is very key. So I think that's something that everyone in think tanks that I know has definitely, but it isn't essential. We have to be quite a creative thinker. Great. Joining Alex. I would agree with all that. I would say um, you have to be, and I, some of the speakers said that you have to be passionate about changing policy uh, and about the, the, the topics that you're working on. And secondly, um, you need to be able to, as I think I said before, kind of express complex ideas in a way that's accessible, but also be able to make the case to policymakers and the general public about why what you're saying is important uh, and why um, the you know the policy needs to change and why the recommendations you're making are the right ones um, in a way that it, people are going to to listen to and act on. Great. Uh, now, in the interest of trying to get through as many questions as possible, I might just put a different question to each of you for this next round. Um, but uh, Lather, if I could start with you again, um, I don't know if you studied economics at university, um, if you didn't maybe make this a bit more general, but someone's asked about um, whether how uh, Joe has asked how does studying economics as an academic subject compared to practical policy research at think tanks. So whether you did economics or another subject, what do you think, how does it feel different to the kind of research you might be doing as a student? So um, I actually didn't do an economics degree, surprisingly, but most of the people I work with did do an economics degree, although some people didn't. So I guess I can sort of talk a bit about it. Um, I guess, say if you wanted, say if you did an economics degree and you wanted to go to like a think tank that works in, on economic issues like the Resolution Foundation, that would be really good and stand you in really good stead because you've already got quite like a good basic knowledge of how economics works and how I guess the world works and you've got that way of thinking I also think if you don't have an economics degree um you can pick that stuff up so I'd never done any economics before I worked here and now I know quite a lot and it's quite easy to learn on the job because you're just doing this stuff every day and you can pick it up and I find things easier to learn when I'm sort of doing them practically so I think that's really helpful. So I think if you've got an economics degree and you're interested in like policy and policy making, I think it's like a really good basis. There's definitely some things that you do learn when you're on the job. So maybe just almost like how things work, how to approach things and how to explain things and sort of practically the sort of things you would advocate for are maybe that sort of stuff that you learn a bit more on the job. I think like if you do have an economics degree, that puts you in a good position, but equally, if you have another degree, that's okay too. Great, thank you. Uh, Ross, we've had a couple of questions around um, both kind of how think tanks decide what um, projects they're gonna do. And then also how much you as a researcher get choice over the projects you then get to work on. And so I just wondered if you could speak a little bit about uh, what that's like at CPP. Um, yeah, sure. So CPP is kind of different. So most think tanks sort of the, a lot of the way that they decide what projects they do comes from money. So it's all, you know, grants and being awarded a grant to do some research. But CPP, we're very lucky we don't have that. So we have just one dedicated source of funding and that gives us a flexibility. So sort of decide what it is that we want to go in and we want to research. Um, I wasn't here when we put last year's research program together, but it seems to be that it's a case that, you know, people sort of propose 
different projects of thinking, oh, for next year's program, you know, we could do we could do something on this and, and or we could do something on this. And everyone gets together and they sort of, you know, battle it out and say, oh, we could do this or we could slightly change this. And then that eventually turns into a research program. Um, but also as well, did you ask about sort of um, like how we can pursue our own interests and that sort of thing? I think that's another that's another thing as well. Like CPP, we're very lucky because we have we don't have to rely on grant funding. That means that, you know, I have interests which are different to other people in the team. So when I've got a bit of free time in my day, I can pursue that, you know. So I've written blogs which are on things which no one has done at CPP before. Um, but that is, you know, partly because of the funding model being slightly different. So that's not reflective of all think tanks, but at CPP, it's, that, that's how it works. And that is the case here. Cool. Um, Alex, again, I'm kind of amalgamating a couple of questions. We've had a few people asking about, uh, I guess, work-life balance. What's the what's the sort of schedule like? How, how, how tough is the work? And also, uh, are there opportunities to sort of work part time? So yeah, how, how have you found the work life balance of being a researcher? So um, obviously, uh, sometimes you'll be doing projects which are deadline driven, and so you you need to plan your time and uh, and meet those deadlines. But you know, I personally work part time. I until recently was a carer as well, and I would say that think tanks in general. Um, a, a very good compared to many employers are pretty good at accommodating part-time working even more I mean particularly because they're, they're trying to encourage kind of more flexible in many cases more flexible ways uh, of working um, so and and you know compared to I would say a lot of jobs in the private sector then the hours are much um, much more sort of reasonable um, and you know I think in, in most cases you, you would work a sort of you know, a stand, unless you're working flexibly time, you kind of work a standard day of nine to five, nine to six, you're not working all evenings. Um, so I think, you know, it's it's very easy to have a very successful career in a think tank and have a very good and very healthy work-life balance. Great. Um, we might have time for another question after this, but this may also just be the last one. I'm it's going to put it to each of you again in turn, because we've had a couple of people asking either about the most challenging or kind of the most difficult thing about the job. So again, going around, if I could start with Lalitha, what do you think is the most challenging thing about your job as a researcher? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, I guess what can be challenging is when you sort of get those periods of time where you do have a lot to do and a lot of like different priorities to balance. You might be like working on a report and getting close to a de deadline, for example, and then the government decide to announce a load of policy, which they always seem to do at really inconvenient times. But, and then you have to like get together and um, do a big response. But I guess, I think from my experience, I've done, I've been in a lot of situations where before I was in that situation, I wouldn't have thought I'd be able to cope with it. So for example, in September, the government announced a load of policy on social care and health and social care. So like increasing national insurance and suspending the triple lock and stuff like that. And we didn't know it was gonna happen until the day. So we all sort of had to scramble together and do a load of analysis and write a paper on, all in one day to like respond to it and that was like a situation I'd never been in before but you learn so much in these situations and you just get like better and better at your job and then things become easier as you go through so I think even when there are sort of more challenging times like in the long run that's quite good for you. Cool um Ross and Alex in 30 seconds each because we've got a minute left um what would you say most challenging thing I'll go quickly um I think my answer might be quite relevant to a lot of you here because I know a lot of you at university I'm quite new to think tanks and work in general I finished my degree in September and I'm new to it and the transition into this work out of academic work has been quite difficult because even though it's still sort of similar you do research you write reports the style that you have to do it in the context that you're in everything moves so fast is very different um so the transition but you will get there you know if you do pursue this you will, you will definitely get there so that would be my challenge great alex hi uh, ross uh, uh anticipating my answer i think like moving from writing kind of academic uh um, papers as a student to then kind of working a think tank which does require different type of writing for a different audience 
it's, it was, it's one of the tough, toughest things, I think. Great. Well, thank you so much um, to everyone on the panel. Uh, it was really, uh, certainly I found it very interesting. You know, everyone has a slightly different kind of uh, kind of work life, uh, even uh, although I'm also a researcher and um, definitely one of the themes coming out, how varied the job can be. Hopefully you all found that useful. Sorry, we didn't get to all of the questions, but um, just a reminder that there is another set of panels starting at 5.55. So um, session 4A is going to be joining the sector as a career change if you're already in work and looking to get into it. And session 4B is external engagement in thinking think tanks. So just thinking about how think tanks work with some external organisations. Um, so thank you so much, everyone. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoy the rest of the uh, event. <laughs>